Hockey Night in Canada, After Hours. The Vancouver Canucks defeat the Minnesota Wild at GM Place tonight. 2-1 the final score as the Canucks end the Wild home winless on a five-game road trip. Uh, there are the new digs in Vancouver. Nice job of renovating the dressing room at a cost of millions of dollars, but it's luxurious. And we welcome uh, Kevin Weeks, or Kevin Bieksa, <laughs> with Kevin Weeks. <laughs> That's all good. It's good name. Too it's many a good Kevins, name. That's too many Kevins on the show. Kevin squared. Second appearance on After Kevin Hours. Kevin squared. We <laughs> <laughs> had you here uh, three years ago. You were in the midst of your breakout season. And since then, uh, you've got a handsome new contract. You've had two children, suffered a bizarre but uh, very serious injury, and uh, established yourself as one of the tougher guys in the NHL to play against. So where would you like to start wherever you want <laughs> start with the game what'd you like about the Canucks tonight uh, I like our start first of all I think uh, you know even though we get that bad bounce and we're, we're behind one nothing uh, you know we uh, I thought we came to them for most of the period uh, you know strong first and then uh, we get on the board in the second and uh, you know we uh, we just kept pushing the whole game and it was like full 60 minutes one of the, one of the first 60 minute efforts we could say we've had all year gonna bring the fans in here right away here's a question from Wendy in Fairview Alberta well actually we'll go to the graphic first uh, the the team struggled in Calgary after a stretch where you played one game in 10 days how much does that kind of layoff affect you that's from Larry in Balzac Alberta yeah when you're practicing every day it's uh, it's not the same you know we're, we're trying to simulate game situations as much as possible but uh, you know fact of the matter is you get a little rusty and Kevin probably knows what that's like uh, you know goalies not uh, feeling game type situations players aren't going back for pucks with pressure and that yeah, wears on you a bit but uh, fortunately we have a lot of games in a short span here now so it's, uh, it's time to, to rebound this is the one I was going to get to earlier this is from Monty in Craven Saskatchewan do you feel that you play better when you are mad or does that take you <laughs> out of your game it's a it's an appropriate question because you had to be mad last night when you sat for a bit in the first period yeah I, I think anybody would be if uh, if they sit for a while but uh, no it's a, it's it's a battle emotionally to stay on an even keel I think I find when I'm a little too mad I'm I'm running around I'm chasing the game I'm trying to throw hits and uh, no, that's not a good thing and I find when I'm uh, a little too complacent that's not a good thing either so it's kind of a fine line there to find a balance Kevin Weeks has a question <laughs> for you <laughs> listen Kevin love the name by the way but uh, no you're one of the most underrated shooters uh, in my mind for, as a defenseman in the league everybody knows Surrey everybody knows Shea Weber as far as having a big shot from the point but for your size you have a really big shot and I've been saying uh, all the time that I, I think you should shoot more and use your shot more because you can beat guys from the blue line. Uh, is that something that you're going to try to do a little bit more this season? Your power play is doing so well, but are you going to try to take a few more shots and, and use that a little bit more? Yeah, I want to shoot as much as possible, especially with uh, the power plane that I'm out there with. I'm out there most of the time with the Sedins and, uh, you know, to, to open up some room for them down low, I got to be getting shots on that from the point. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm not going to force it, but uh, every chance I get, I, I, I'd love to put one on that. Excellent. Kevin, your toughness uh, can be traced probably directly to your family and those, uh, those full contact BXA uh, family tournaments called uh, the Tin Cup tournaments that you play in Grimsby. Uh, I think every year after the season is done, Elliot Friedman did um, a marvelous feature in Inside Hockey uh, featuring you and your father late last season, I think, during the playoffs. So here's your father, Al, talking about the Tin Cup <laughs> tournament. Well, as you can see, it's a very expensive trophy. Um, <laughs> actually, we picked up the trophy for a dollar at a yard sale, and it's screwed on to you ever seen this? a bunch of beer oh, cans no, I've seen this crumpled yeah, up sure. through all the I celebration like the little, uh, over the last few background. years. And, uh, <laughs> but more importantly, it's uh, very coveted by uh, both teams, and uh, once that puck drops, uh, uh, everything goes, it's full contact, and it would be unusual at the end of the game if a couple of players weren't bleeding in the dressing room. Well, one thing we should point out, just as we'll show here, the NHL player has never been the MVP of this tournament. Well, we're hoping that uh, Kevin, uh, you know, gets some good experience uh, playing with the Canucks there, and uh, eventually, sometime, he'll be able to play in this game and bring what uh, it needs uh, to have him uh, enjoy the honor of being the MVP. He certainly hasn't demonstrated that yet. So. There we go. A few more years in the NHL, and maybe you'll be ready for the Tin Cup tournament. Is that fair? <laughs> I think so. I, I'm actually going to try to get home for Christmas this year for a couple days, so they're going to try to schedule the game around uh, that short span. But uh, I know he's very proud of that segment there, and he's very proud of the game that we have every Christmas. And uh, it's, it's gathered a lot of attention uh, locally. Your relationship with your father, Al, worked out exactly the way it's supposed to for father and son, in that he shaped your character. How do you do it? 
Uh, you know, just uh, the way he raised three of us. Uh, you know, we're just three typical boys from southern Ontario who like to uh, wrestle, mix it up, and go watch him. Uh, you know, if you watch that segment, you've heard me talk about we used to go watch him play hockey, uh, you know, in Hamilton Double Rinks there. And it's a rough neighborhood. And, uh, you know, we just had fun and, and watched him, and he raised us, uh, you know, I thought perfectly. Kevin. Well, one of the interesting things to me is you played at Bowling Green, and I remember when I started getting letters, you know, from the U.S. teams and U.S. schools, uh, one of the things that shocked me was Bowling Green's colors were brown and orange mm -hmm. as opposed to green. Naturally, I thought they had green and green and white uniforms, but uh, how was your time at Bowling Green, and now that you've established yourself in the league and naturally you've gotten your new contract, which Scott's obviously referred to, are they hitting you up now for that alumni donation? <laughs> Maybe the Kevin Bieksa uh, Center of Excellence, let's say, or a Strength and Conditioning Center. Yeah, I just... Uh, Actually, I got back there for the first time this summer in my class. Uh, we all made it back there for the uh, so the alumni golf tournament, and uh, I really enjoyed my four years there. It's uh, I still say it's the best decision I ever made. 16 years old when I had to make the decision. I know for a lot of young players mm -hmm. that's a tough time. It is. Uh, to, you know to hold out and to, to offer a college scholarship, especially with the uh, you know the glamour of the OHL, and the right. WHL, and the Q. So. Uh, you know, that's, that's where I really leaned on my dad, and he really uh, grounded me and, and, and helped me make a, you know, steer me in the right direction. Let's just follow that story. Maybe we can start way, way back when you had a picture taken with uh, the most famous person <laughs> in hockey, one of the most famous people in all the land, of course. Um, and here it is. Don Cherry can't possibly remember this because he's taken probably or posed for probably 10,000 of these over the years, but I'm guessing you remember it. That's you with Don. Yeah, what, kind, were, what, what kind of four? suit is uh, Don wearing there? It's a pretty yeah. normal-looking suit for him. <laughs> <laughs> they evolved nicely after that, but what do you remember about this? Uh, from what I remember, that was uh, at the end of the year team uh, dinner that uh, my dad was a coach, I guess, at the time and took us there. It was in Toronto, mm -hmm. Don Cherry's yeah. Grapevine. And, uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. I don't think he remembers that, but he actually ended up drafting me about uh, 15 years later. He doesn't yeah. remember that either. And well, the <laughs> that's the next part of the story because uh, yep. you were drafted by the Mississauga Ice Dogs and mm -hmm. they really wanted to keep you. But the night that you would have played your first exhibition game and they were, they were pressing you to play, mm -hmm. you left didn't play because you wanted to protect your NCAA eligibility. So, and as Kevin's pointed out, you did well at Bowling Green, but uh, uh, this is a decision that a lot of 16-year-old players face. Why did you decide on uh, the American <coughs> University route? Uh, I, you know, prior to that, going to camp, I saw uh, a Michigan University game, and I think it was it was Mike Comrie's first mm -hmm. game, actually. Mm -hmm. you know, pretty dynamic player, fun to watch, and just the atmosphere at uh, Yost Arena there and everything. and. Um, you know, just weighing the pros and cons of, uh, you know, having an education after hockey. Um, you know, at that time, I didn't think I'd be good enough to make the NHL. Or you know, I still had the dream alive, but uh, it wasn't reality. So, you know, education was kind of the fallback plan. Perfect. All right. Kevin Bieksa is our guest on After Hours. Uh, more with Kevin when we come back. Uh, fatherhood is one of the topics up for discussion when we return to GM Place.